Hello, I'm Rebecca Phoenix, and I'm presenting as part of the Stern Line Colloquium, which is COVID-friendly and online this year. My area of focus was Victorian women in networking, and I specifically focused on the Six Corner Sisters. Thank you for the History Department and the Europe program for funding this research, and also my advisor, Dr. Ash, and Dr. Richmond from the History Department for, you know, advising me and keeping me on track. Special thanks to Edinburgh University, Rice University, Canordia State, and the British Institute of Florence for either having materials already online or uh, sending me materials. I would have preferred to travel to Scotland and Texas, but COVID safety comes first. The focus of my research was investigating how the Horner sisters and Victorian women use their networking capabilities to not only influence their own research, but the research of the men in their lives. To redefine what important labor means. Um, oftentimes, we as historians and academics place a lot of value on being the first to do something or the great man behind a discovery or academic contribution. But there are so many other roles along the way that would, without them, those contributions would not have been possible. So some background. The six Horner sisters were all daughters of Leonard Horner, who was one of the leading geologists of his age. What's so unusual is they sat at the perfect cross-section between class and academic privilege. They were able to receive education to the equivalent of their male peers um, up until marriage from their father, who not only encouraged them to seek out knowledge, but also encouraged them to use that knowledge. All of the sisters, except for Mary, had published under her own name. This was in part because Leonard needed research assistance, but also because he wanted his daughters to be able to pursue a full life. Um, letters indicate that he not only was encouraging, but he also encouraged the four women who Mary's husbands to continue to allow them and provide space for these women to pursue their studies. Sisters that did marry didn't marry until their 30s, which was older than the average age of marriage at the time. And these women also married into some of the top men of those fields. And those fields also reflected their own personal interests, all except for Catherine. If you've ever heard of Charles Lyell, Mary Lyell was his wife and her ability to be his eyes as he went blind, as well as her translating skills, which were used by Darwin, and her conchology research, was all rolled into his Principles of Geology books, which are still referenced in today's geological courses. The effect that these women had on the men in their lives also, as the paper explores, is related to their networking abilities. My paper, due to time and COVID restrictions, only focuses on three out of the six sisters. However, Leonora, Susan, and Catherine had significant effects on the networks they worked in. Leonora, in her marriage to George Heinrich Pertz, who was the royal German historian in working on finishing the Germana Momantica, which is the big book of German history for the time, was able to use family connections to get him into private archives and libraries in London. And then after they were married and she had moved to Germany, she was able to connect Charles Lyell, her brother-in-law, and Mary's husband with German geologists that he had not previously had access to. These women acted as nodes for the men in their lives, but also for themselves. Susan was able to use her father's network of associates in Florence and expand that to gain her access to different Italian art sites, libraries, archives. It put her in touch with a lot of academics and a lot of practicing artists so that she could do research on things like Italian Italian and Egyptian vases, and with her sister Joanna, write one of the most popular Florentine travel books of the time. These women's contributions were often discredited or they were erased from the intellectual ideas that circulated in these networks. 
One example can be seen in Catherine, who even after becoming a celebrated botanist for her book on the distribution of ferns, was still erased from an, a subscription effort to save one of her fellow scientists' homes from foreclosure because that man would have not liked to be beholden or be helped by a woman. He would only accept the money if it had come from Charles Dar Darwin who, himself, who took credit for the subscription effort. Now, the point is not to say that all women are the origin of men's ideas or that these men didn't come up with some original ideas. Victorian intellectualism would not be what it was without women working alongside these men for no little to no pay and certainly no credit. I think we as historians really need to reevaluate how we assign value to labor. All labor is important, even what we consider small labor. Thank you for watching my presentation for the Stern Lion Colloquium, and thank you to Wayne State for giving me this platform. If you have any questions or comments or want to talk about the Horner Sisters more, please comment down below. I'll try to get to as many as I can, um, and have a great day.